Hey, how's it going everybody? Mr. Tom here for another Photoshop tutorial. Uh, this will be the very first one, the basic one. Uh, so let's make LHS proud and try to get right down to business here. I'm recording on the iPad, so sorry in advance for any type of quality issues or anything of the such, uh, but we'll get started here. So the few things that I'm going to go over today, uh, there's roughly eight in total. Uh, it's how to create a new document, uh, things called panels, other words known as your workspace, uh, saving a non-copyright image from Google, uh, file place versus file open, project tabs, layers panel, file save, and control R, which is really just rulers. Uh, a whole bunch of stuff to try and remember, so it's going to be really quick, uh, but luckily you can pause this video and that should help you learn along the way. So let's get right into it. All right, first things first, how to make a new document, okay? Uh, this whole thing is known as your workspace. Go figure, because you're working in the space. Wow, all right? Uh, so what you want to do to create a new document is uh, just like if you've ever worked on Microsoft Word or anything of the such, uh, you want to go up to File up in the top left and select New. Uh, and what you'll have pop up here, uh, and since we're using Adobe CS, Five version, uh, so this is rather dated, but uh, it's still used in the industry today. Uh, it will pop up with this standard uh, new panel, okay? New pop-up window to set up your document. So you can name it. Uh, it's just good practice to name it right off the start. I'll try not to bump the tripod here as I'm trying to type on my keyboard. Uh, so I'm going to use an example today of actually creating seals. Uh, so for those of you that don't know, seals are some of my favorite animals. They're basically like aquatic dogs. Uh, super cute. It's good time. All right. Uh, so that is where you name your document. And you can see I automatically tried to uh, begin to enter these values here, the width and height. Uh, so width is how wide your document is. So basically left to right uh, measurement. And then height is bottom to top. Okay. Uh, so if you want to set this up and you are printing this out, uh, I would highly suggest that you change over to inches. That way you can match it to a certain size of printer paper or anything of the such. Uh, I will tell you that uh, there is some stock presets up here, uh, such as photo. So if you go to photo, you can see it has some standard photo sizes. Uh, a lot of the times that you'll get in yearbook photos and such uh, will be seven uh, by five. Uh, or portrait is straight up and down. Uh, so that would be seven by five where the seven is the height. Uh, so pretty cool automatic setups. Uh, I myself like going to clipboard uh, and setting up based off of a standard printer size piece of paper, other words known as letter. Uh, so a letter size piece of paper is eight and a half by 11. Okay, so we need to decide if we would like that landscape wide or portrait as mentioned before up and down. Think of the portrait of Mona Lisa. It's taller more than it is wide. Okay, so we'll do portrait. So the width will be the smaller measurement, 8.5, 8 and a half. And the height will be 11, the larger dimension. Now, whenever you set up a certain document, uh, 72 resolution uh, is how many pixels per inch uh, made by this designation right over here pixels per inch or if we're doing metric pink pixels per centimeter uh, pixels per inch is how many little squares make up the photo per inch uh, so we'll kind of get into this right when I open up uh, a picture uh, but for now the resolution 72 is a low resolution okay so let's go ahead and bump that up to 300 300 in my case is standard. I like really uh, vivid photos, relatively higher definition. So 72 has less detail because it has less squares per inch of the photo. Uh, so we bump that up to 300. That way it is a higher definition. Now as for the bottom here, uh, background contents, that is, do you want to start with a white background? Picture like you're drawing on a white piece of paper. Would you want to do that? Or would you begin wanting to work on a see-through piece of paper or a transparent piece of paper? Uh, so basically what this all comes down to is if you're gonna put it in something like a PowerPoint slide or maybe an ad, 
Uh, do you want that awkward white box? Uh, I'm sure many of you have tried to place an image into something before and it has that awkward white box. Uh, that's starting with a white background. All right, so I'm just gonna do uh, customary, do transparent, because I can add in a white background later if I needed to. So let's just start with the basics here. And once you've done that, we've had all the things that we need set up for a standard uh, Photoshop document that will be printed on letter size piece of paper. So let's go ahead and click OK. And all of these checkered patterns will probably hurt your eyes for a little, uh, but you get used to it. Uh, basically, these are specifically the texture or pattern uh, for transparency. This means that you can see through uh, the back of your document. So there will be no awkward white space. Uh, so just to kind of get even more into things, uh, we've set up a document now, as mentioned in the beginning of the video, let's go over some panels. All right. So what I mean by panels are all of these cool things off to the right hand side. So even though your workstation probably looked a little something like uh, this, uh, where you just had kind of these words over here, not these big boxes, uh, like I started out with, uh, that's just because I set this up how I wanted. Uh, you can set up your workspace how you want. Uh, we'll be getting into a lot of things, how to use color, how to use swatches, styles, adjustment, mass, basically everything on this right side here. Uh, and you can see whenever I click on it, it expands a panel in order to edit it. Uh, so if you want these active all the time or any sort of panel active all the time, you can click on these little tiny uh, rewind looking buttons, uh, the two arrows. Uh, and even if I hover over it, it says expand panels. So if I click on that, these will be expanded and be that size that they are now uh, forever and ever until I collapse them. Uh, you'll also notice that each panel will actually create tabs. Uh, so go figure everything that has to relate to color uh, they grouped right next to color. So we got some styles here, some swatches, some colors, all the good stuff that we'll be getting into later in my later tutorials. Uh, but for now, that is the basic definition of panels. It's anything uh, that has to deal with any type of adjustment uh, or anything of the such. Now, what happens if for some reason you accidentally delete your panels? Okay, so some of you may log on and notice that you don't have any of these words anywhere around here, okay? Uh, so it'll be kind of scary in the first couple of seconds, but an easy way to get them back is this drop down window uh, right here. So this drop down menu for window, uh, you can see that one of your options is workspace and we have it set to essentials, uh, which is the automatic or default setting. Uh, so you'll notice that these uh, options right up here in the top right match these. Uh, that is because each one of these settings is set for a separate uh, style of Photoshop work. Uh, so the essentials are everything essential for basic Photoshopping. Uh, so let's go ahead and say uh, my color menu. So let me expand this here so that they're all active. Uh, and what you'll see is that everything that is active right now has a little check next to it. Uh, so if you came in here and you noticed uh, that you don't have your colors, oh no, where'd they go? Uh, what you can do is just come up to window and come on down to color. And you can see it even has a quick button of F6. So what that means is those are known as hotkeys. Uh, you can either click on color and it'll bring it back. Uh, or if you just hit F6, so I'm going to do that on my keyboard right now. Oh, got to click away first. F6, you can see that my colors panel is appearing and disappearing. So I can toggle it on and off how I please. Uh, so if you ever find anything that you're missing uh, or have some extra time, uh, try playing around with some of the panels that are around here. Uh, but you should always go back to essentials whenever you go over a lesson with me just because that is what we work with mainly. Uh, we're doing some basic Photoshopping here. Uh, and all that other good stuff. Uh, so let me try and get this layer away here. I accidentally clicked. There we go. All right, uh, so next thing, saving a non-copyright image from Google, okay? Uh, please, please, please don't get yourself in trouble and go on Google Images, find the first picture that you like, copy it, and begin Photoshopping it. 
Uh, that sometimes gets you in troubles with uh, specific copyright laws. So you can see I already got everything set up here uh, with seals. Uh, again, favorite animal, cool stuff. Uh, but right up top here, you will notice that my top uh, options here look a little bit different than yours. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you're in images, search whatever you want, and then you wanna activate tools, okay? So with all of that, you'll see all of these lower options here pop up, and one of the options is uh, your copyright. Uh, so you can see uh, anything that is labeled for reuse uh, does not have any type of copyright laws associated with them, so we can use all of these for commercials or our own artwork. Uh, I myself like reuse with modification. Uh, chances are, if we're doing some type of modifying, uh, then we can use them as long as they are different in some form, which is what we're gonna be doing in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I found this photo. Uh, thank you, Pixabay, uh, for being our example for today. Uh, but you have been labeled under Google for reuse with modification, so we are going to modify this picture uh, and use it in this example. Uh, so what I am going to do is I am going to find the image that I like, this one for the example, right click and select save image as, okay? So when you save image as, uh, this window will pop up. This is your navigation window on where you would like to save it. Please do not save it to the desktop or in downloads. Uh, if you do do that, uh, you will never get it the next day when you log in tomorrow for school. Uh, you want to go into your drive, so chances are if you are a student, your drive will look like the numbers for the year that you are graduating, last name, first initial. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and save this in my drive. You can see I have a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, and I am actually going to go into my examples here. So where are my examples? Uh, and we'll just save it right here. Okay. So seals, that was the name of it. Boom, there it is. You can see I already saved it before a little bit. Uh, so now that is saved in my drive as that file name. Uh, in hindsight, I probably should have renamed it, been a little bit more organized. Uh, but for this quick example, uh, we'll just keep going with that. So I'm gonna go into Photoshop now. And so that was three of the eight things we're gonna go over. Uh, so the next thing that I would like to go over is file place versus file open okay uh, so when I save that picture of seals it has a specific size already okay uh, so if I go back into that you can always find the size uh, right below the image so this was actually uh, six or 960 pixels by 640 pixels okay so it's decent size it's not crazy big it's not high definition uh, still a decent size photo here all right so let me show you the difference here you can see I have these rulers active, all right, along the edge. I have my rulers set to inches. So our eight and a half sheet of 11 sheet of paper, eight and a half by 11, you can see uh, on these rulers specifically. Yeah, they, uh, they say this page is eight and a half by 11. Cool, all right. Uh, so what I'm gonna show you is, let me go ahead and file open and show you the mistake with that, okay? So you only really wanna file open a picture uh, if you are going to keep that picture the same size, uh, as well as if you are going to be only editing really that photo. All right, so let me scroll down, find that uh, seals here, seals, seals, seals. Hey, there it is. All right, so this is file open. You can see, whoa, what happened to my page? Okay, uh, it's not the right size. Oh, no. All right, that is because file open opens it to the size that it has been formatted with, okay? So right now, this specific picture is 960 pixels wide by 640 pixels tall. Now you're probably still questioning about what exactly are pixels. Uh, I am going to zoom in, which uh, in order to do so, you wanna press and hold the control button and hit the little plus next to backspace. So I'm pressing and holding uh, control and I am pressing the plus button and you can see I'm zooming in, I'm zooming in. And this whole picture is made up of these little tiny squares, okay? So what that means is basically this picture is made up of little tiny squares that have different tints, and that is how you can actually see this picture as a whole. So even if I zoom in on this seal's face, you can see it just starts getting more and more boxy, more squares. 
uh, to the point where I get to his eye, and chances are barely anyone on the face of the earth could tell me what that is just by looking at it. But if I zoom out, all those little tiny pixels play a huge role in making this entire picture. So earlier when we made uh, the specific page 300 pixels per inch, uh, this specifically uh, makes our document high definition. So let's go ahead and show you the difference between file new and file place, all right? So that was file open. Now, whenever I say file new, file place, uh, we've already got the file new taken care of. That's how we made this new document. Uh, but now we got a file place. So I'm gonna head on up to file and I am going to select place. Now what this does, if I can find that seal document again, uh, this will actually place, go figure, uh, the document inside of my uh, master document, okay? So it's placing the picture inside our document. Uh, so right now, whenever you place anything, it will come up with your transform controls. This is where you can resize the image, all right? Uh, so just some help, press and hold shift on your keyboard. Uh, and what that will do is lock it into place, all right? So no matter what size I make this, uh, it won't get distorted. So basically I won't have really, really tall and skinny seals or short and fat seals, all right? So by locking it into place, uh, by pressing shift, I can keep the proportions, okay? And lock it into place. So keep the sizes. Uh, so I do that by clicking and dragging the little black squares around the corner. Uh, and those are called handles. So whenever I say click, hold, and drag the handles, uh, that is specifically what I mean, all right? So uh, once you have it correctly sized, so if I'm printing out this piece of paper uh, and I want this picture of seals to print out, uh, I can size it up like this, or if I really want to, if somehow it's not really fitting onto the piece of paper too well, you can see I hovered a little bit away from one of my corner handles and a little flip-flop back and forth arrowheads have appeared and I can click, hold and drag and that's how I actually rotate the picture. Uh, once again, holding shift does a magical thing. It locks it into specific angles. So if you want a perfect 90 degree turn, turn it on its perfect side, there you go. Uh, just hold shift. Uh, so I'm gonna keep it left to right. Uh, and whenever you do anything uh, and you try to edit something else, uh, especially if it has these X uh, insignias through it, the little boxes, uh, chances are you either need to hit enter or a uh, dead giveaway will be right up here. You'll see a little check mark. So in order to permanently place things, you need to either hit the check or hit enter on your keyboard, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit check and you can see my image got a little clearer. Uh, so if your image wasn't necessarily as clear as you want it, it's okay. All right, once you hit the check mark, it'll probably clear up unless of course you've got a low definition photo. If your photo at this point does not look like you want it to, chances are when you got it offline, uh, it wasn't a big enough number of pixels, okay? So we size this up. You can see I have a whole bunch more pixels per inch here. All right, wow, very high definition. Let me try to zoom out again, all right? So, uh, yep, control plus to zoom in, control minus to zoom out. Uh, so that is file open versus file place, uh, which is a great segue into the fifth thing to go over today, project tabs. Uh, project tabs are right up here. Whenever you start on a new project or anything of the such, you can actually have two documents open at a time. So these are little tabs to keep track of all of your projects. Uh, it can get a little crazy. At some points I've had 30 projects going at once all the way up here. Uh, so just keep in mind where exactly you are uh, and which project you're working on. It's very important to stay organized. Okay, so that is project tabs, and in between those two, just a final comparison between file new and file place versus file open. Okay, so if you want your document to print out the right size, my little hint to you, always file new, make the size of the document first, and then file place. So, on to the sixth Thing, all right, and this is the layers panel, okay? Uh, so the layers panel is probably the most important panel out there. 
Uh, this is solely because this is the panel where you actually select what you are editing. So we will get into this soon enough, uh, but for instance, let me go ahead and file place two more of my seals. Uh, let's find, there they are, hey -o. Okay, cool. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of a collage here, so I'm gonna have a whole bunch of seals, and it's gonna be great. Okay, file place, gotta go find the seals. Yeah, I'll just have three of them. Where are they? Ayo, perfect. All right, so I got my three pictures of seals. What you'll notice is every time that I do something like that, uh, it will actually add a new layer. Okay, so each layer has its own specific uh, object inside of it. So these eyeballs off to the left here, uh, those are how you turn off and on layers. So you can see first I placed uh, the biggest layer, okay, the biggest picture right here in the center. So if I turn the little eyeball on and off, you can see what my art would look like without that. Maybe I like that better, maybe I don't. If you wanna check, go ahead and turn off the eyeballs. All right, uh, so you can see I do that with my other ones. Okay, figuring out which layer is which. Uh, I like to name my layers. It's just good practice to stay organized. Organization is a very important part. So what you can do is actually right click and go up to layer properties and you can see I can name it. So, whoops, hit the tripod. I knew I would do it. All right, so here we go. Uh, we'll call this big picture. All right, so that's the big picture right down in the center. All right, uh, this color down here is you can actually tag a layer. Uh, so let's make that one red, okay? Uh, this one is, let's see, the top right small, okay? So I'm gonna right click on the layer again. It's very important to figure out where you're right clicking. If you right click on the photo, uh, you come up with different options. So it's very important that you right click on the words. So right click property, layer properties at the very top and I am going to name this one uh, small right upper, okay? So this is the small right upper seal, okay? Uh, you can see I can turn it on and off. Uh, the next one, we're gonna go ahead and name this one. So right click on the text uh, layer properties. We'll go small left lower. All right, and we can turn that one on and off. Cool stuff. Uh, so I didn't really uh, layer any colors or assign any colors to the layers. That's okay, we are only really working with three. I don't have to be too crazily organized. Uh, so the first tool that I'm gonna show you, uh, finally we're gonna start moving some stuff around the first basics of Photoshop. You've learned how to set up a document by now. Uh, we are going to use the Move tool. So this is the very first tool up here on the tool palette. Uh, if you don't like where your tool palette's at, you can actually hover over the uh, gray margin right at the top of the tool palette and click, hold, and drag that to wherever you want. So I'm going to move my tool palette all the way over to here, uh, just so that I always go to the right whenever I want anything. All right, so my move tool. Uh, this is why the layers panel is probably the most important one. Uh, say I want to move my lower left hand uh, project just a little bit, okay? Well, I'm gonna click on that layer, make sure that layer is selected because I'm editing that layer. And now you can see I can click, hold, and drag and move it, all right? So maybe I wanna overlap my photo just a little bit, okay? Make it look like it's layering up. Uh, now I'm gonna go and select my small right upper picture and I'm gonna click and hold and drag that around. All right, cool, now we're getting some cool layering effects. Uh, now, if I wanted to make it look like all of these were stacked on top of one another, starting from the bottom, working my way up, this is again why the layer panel is probably most important. The order matters. So right now you can see I have my big picture of seals right at the bottom, all right? That is because uh, you can see that it is below everything else as well. So right now my big picture is at the bottom below all the photos and my big picture layer is at the bottom as well. If I want it above something else, all I need to do is hover over the text and click, hold and drag and work my way up. You will see a dark line appears in between the other two layers. And if I release, oh, 
that other picture, the small right upper picture, has now been set below the big picture. And you can tell that by the order of the layers. So that, again, is the sixth thing that I will be uh, finished going over here with you. Uh, now we got two things left to do, and that's file save and rulers. So let's start with rulers. So as I've said earlier and referred to these, uh, these are your rulers off to the edge. Uh, you can right click on them to change the specific uh, measurements or units. Uh, but if they're not there, you can just press and hold control and hit R. Okay, so R for rulers. By doing that, you can actually toggle them on and off. I always like to keep mine on. That way I can just base everything where they are. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, order these up. Make sure they look a little bit better here. Yeah, I guess that way we see all the seals all the time. Uh, so last thing to go over, file saving. So always save your work. So let's go up to file, and you'll want to go down to save as. Whenever you save anything, I highly suggest you use save as. If you just hit save, it might save it in the downloads folder, and you're never getting it back. Uh, so let's go ahead and click save as. And again, let's try to get a little bit organized here. So I'm going to fix the problems that I did earlier. I'm going to go into this PC, scroll down, go into my specific uh, folder or drive, and then what I will do is make a new folder. So I will right click wherever in this blank area, go into new, there we go, and I will create a new folder. Uh, so please, if you're starting to take my graphics course for the first time or any other course, uh, like if you're taking art with Miss Bitzer or anything of the such, uh, please, please, please name it accordingly. You really want to get organized with all of this. I know I'm not one to talk, but I do a lot of Photoshopping, as you can tell. Uh, so, oh, I exited out. Let's right click and rename that just so that I can name it correctly. So, I'm going to go ahead and name this Graphics Examples. Okay, cool. Uh, so, now that I've opened that up, or created that file, I can open it up. I'm gonna double click on that folder and I will save this as Photoshop bronze example one. Okay, so this is the first tutorial that we will be going over in order to get your bronze Photoshop medal. Uh, so please save it as such in your drive. Uh, and then I will give you specific instruction on how to go about submitting this for a grade. Uh, so last but not least, let's go ahead and hit save. Uh, be sure that you have Photoshop uh, document selected. If you do a JPEG, uh, we won't be able to edit it later. Uh, please be sure it says PSD uh, or Photoshop document. Hit save. Uh, this will pop up. This is basically saying uh, maximum compatibility with the use of Photoshop files and other applications with other versions. Uh, so this is saying, do you want it to interact with other programs? Uh, just click OK. And now it's saved. Uh, if anything has never been saved or before you close out, uh, it will have a little tiny star. So just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and move one last thing, just like that. And you can see a little tiny star has popped up next to my screen. All right, so I really got to save. Otherwise, I'm going to lose whatever work I just did, uh, even if I try to move it back. So just a real quick save, I'm gonna file save. Boom, okay. So save as is how you save your document for the first time. If you keep it open, just hit file save. Uh, please note that it will save over your previous documents. Uh, and that's it. So thank you for being with us. It's been 29 minutes so far. So uh, get to Photoshop and try opening up a new document uh, anytime, uh, but now you know. Please take the exit ticket or anything of the such if I do have that for your class at the moment. Uh, that is just a quick reminder. Thanks and have a great day.